Yeah, I like this brother right here. Uh, there is a, a powerful message in new music from the multi-talented Mecca Don. The song is called Still Dope, and the video features, as you see, iconic images. Mecca Don is a rapper, he's a lawyer, author, and he is also an entrepreneur, and guess what? Mecca Don joins us right now to talk more about his new single and be with us to talk about other issues right here on BNC. Thank you for starting your day with us, Mecca. Good to see you, my man. Hey, good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. So the new single is called Still Dope. Yes, you are still dope. But what, what does that, that title mean to you? Yeah, you know, going through uh, the, the pandemic and uh, also some personal issues, I had gone through a, a surgery that had kind of sidelined me for a while and then the pandemic and then, um, you know, heading up into the election and the protests and the murder of George Floyd. There was just a lot of stuff going on and, you know, talking to a lot of different people around the nation, I just felt like a lot of people were hurting. And so ultimately I felt like I needed to do something um, through music kind of, you know, to, to make people feel good, even if it's just for three minutes. And ultimately I landed on the kind of still dope and the message of still dope was just to remind people that look, no matter what you're going through, no matter what we've been through, um, you're still standing, you're still here, you're still dope. And uh, so that's that's kind of the message behind it and, and what I wanted people to take away from it. How much of that message were you talking to yourself when it came to that? As, as you mentioned, you, you did go through a surgery and there are a lot of different things that the nation had to go through as a whole when it came to social justice. But how much did that impact you and how much did you have to encourage yourself after that? Because you went through something personally. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I, I you know, probably at the height of my career musically, um, right before I, you know, I had gotten the accident um, that caused me to have surgery. So I had gone through, you know, personally gone through a depression that wasn't even related to the pandemic. And then the pandemic hit. And then the George Floyd thing happened. And, and then the, the depression just increased. Uh, so initially, when I actually wrote the song, uh, I was going to write it back as like my own personal comeback song. Like, I'm still dope. Just because you guys haven't heard from me for a while doesn't mean that I'm not still dope. And then I realized, I was like, now. Nah, this actually has to have a more broad or a broader and more universal message. Um, so yeah, I was definitely talking to myself um, and, and you know using it as a way to encourage myself, but it was also a way to encourage people, um, particularly because I'd had so many different conversations um, doing that DEI consulting, diversity, equity, inclusion consulting, and um, talking to different mm -hmm. people and just really getting different perspectives. I realized it needed to be broader than just me. Now, you know, I know your background, you've done a lot of uh, music for a lot of sports teams, Ohio State, I know you went to Ohio State, big Buckeye fan, you did some things for ESPN, for Fox Sports, got licensed by them, but now in, in the social uh, activism lane, why is it important for artists like yourself to kind of get back into that lane, just to kind of get the message out through music? You know, when I was when I was writing this song, and or even just thinking about it, you know, I, I started thinking about my idols in music and the people that, I, that that had gotten me interested in music to begin with, Tupac, Bob Marley, uh, Marvin Gaye, you know, and I started thinking about like, what, what would they be saying during this time period? You know, what, what type of mm -hmm. music would they be putting out? What type of messages would they be putting out? And I know that Pac and Bob Marley and even Michael Jackson, I know they would be, they would be speaking to the times. And so I was like, you know what, you know, I need to channel some of that energy. Obviously I'm not comparing myself to them. I'm just saying that, those are the people that inspired me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Those people will, will be speaking to the times. And right now, I think it's more important than ever because there's so many issues that are going on in our communities, um, nationally, internationally, that are affecting us. And you realize that now is a time where, you know, especially with social media, artists and influencers have so much power to influence the minds of people. So I feel like it's a responsibility, but I feel like you know, people should do what's in their heart. I don't think people should be forced specifically to speak on things that's not necessarily in their heart or something that they're not comfortable right. with. But if they are, if they are, then I think that it's incumbent upon them to do so. And, and speaking of doing what's on your heart, man, it's one of the things I admire about you is because you, you, you went out on faith. I mean, you were a practicing lawyer. I mean, a, a pretty good lawyer at, at a law firm. And you said, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. 
I want to be a rapper. Yeah. I mean, that 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 is a big leap of faith, and I admire you for that. But I also got to point out that your parents have 10 degrees between them. Uh, you got three siblings. Uh, two of them are lawyers, <laughs> and one is a doctor, and you are a lawyer. And then you tell your family, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to be a lawyer anymore. I want to be a rapper. <laughs> I can only imagine what that conversation was like with your parents and your family. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the good, the good thing is that, you know, I had been in music since I was little. I mean, I was break dancing for people since mm -hmm. I was four years old. We were writing raps in the basement when we were like eight, my brother and I started a band when we were mm -hmm. in high school. So it wasn't like I just all of a sudden decided one day that I'm going to rap, but to the public, that's kind of what it seemed like, you know, for people who didn't know me, people who knew me, it was, you know, they understood. Uh, for people who didn't mm -hmm. know me, it was it was a big deal. But even beyond that, you know, to your point, you know, even though my parents understood and they knew that that was the thing that I was the most passionate about for for years, you know, leaving a top ten law firm, you know, after going to NYU for law school and and just you know having a potential stable job and career and you know rising and all that type of stuff, and all of a sudden I jump into an industry that's more uncertain. Uh, something that they don't really know about and understand. That was that was definitely a tough one, you know. Uh, but my mom, just like all moms, she always thought I was supposed to be a star. So, uh, you know, for her, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't nearly as big of a deal. Uh, but for my dad, you know, he was just, it wasn't that he he was upset. It was more that he was just nervous. You know, he didn't understand the industry. He right. didn't know what, what this was going to mean. And, um, you know, it's it's just one of those things that just created a lot of uncertainty for him. But I think that I developed a lot of trust amongst my parents and family um, before that, you know, I'm not I'm a rash decision maker. I am bold, but I do have a plan. Mm -hmm. I did have a plan and, you know, I had saved money. It wasn't like I was asking, you know, them to support it or anything like that. So I think ultimately they kind of just trusted, um, trusted me and had faith. And then now they're my, the biggest fans ever. So it worked out. Of course, of course. And, and, and they're big fans. And of course, you're a smart guy. You're going to do it the right way. Quickly, before we let you go, um, your music and, and your law background, how, how do they work together now uh, as you walk into yeah. your purpose of what your life is supposed to be? So, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. That's a, that's a good question because a lot of times, especially when I, when I started originally, people just thought that, you know, being a lawyer and being an artist were so disconnected. And they just couldn't understand how you can how you can be both. It just didn't make sense to them. And still to this day, I think a lot of people kind of operate that way. Um, but what I've realized, <clears throat> excuse me, particularly recently, um, is that they're so connected in terms of my overall mission. For example, you know, for example, I think I mentioned this earlier. I've been doing a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion consulting. I'm also mm -hmm. on the Equality Co Coalition, um, the Executive Committee for the Equality Coalition for the Big Ten. And I realized that my purpose really is to encourage and empower. And so for me, I feel like whether I'm doing that through, you know, consulting or I'm doing that through law and the clients that I represent and, and help them get through issues or whether I do that through music, you know, it's all the same purpose. So it's just they're just different mediums to yeah. get there, different ways to get there. And then also personally being an entrepreneur, you know, I, I've negotiated my own deals. I negotiated my own deals with ESPN. I negotiated my own deals with HBO. Um, you know, I haven't had to hire a lawyer for some of those things. So that's been pretty yep. cool. And um, <laughs> so there's overlap there as well. And then obviously being a business person, there's obviously overlap. So it's a lot more connected than people think, especially when all, you know, the purpose is, is, is universal, connected. Keep those commissions. Very smart, brother. And I also love that you are uh, fighting to get rid of some of the stereotypes when it comes to black athletes out there as well. Keep on doing a great job, man. Keep on doing your work. Uh, we appreciate you. We're going to continue to support you. You know I will. Uh, the song is still dope. And yes, he is. He is Mecca Don. Thanks for starting your day with us uh, on this day, on this Tuesday, Mecca. We'll talk to you a little bit later, my man. Welcome back anytime. Thank you. Have a good one.